Wisdom teeth can be a problem for most people. We no longer use these teeth, so why do they take up so much space in the back of our jaws? In 2008, the Wall Street Journal ran an article titled Smart Reposed to Intelligent Design. It had claimed that wisdom teeth are a direct challenge to intelligent design. How ironic that a 2020 article in the notoriously atheistic Scientific American points to an actually factual cause of the pervasive problem of unwanted wisdom teeth. Which view is right? That wisdom teeth came from a design so poor that a good creator would not have made him? Or this new explanation, based on research? Tooth crowding has been reasonably explained within the creation literature as the result of modern dietary changes to processed food. A creation-believing dentist wrote a book in 1998 describing how modern soft and sugary diets help rot today's teeth and leave undersized jaws. Teeth show such great design that even secularists marvel at their ingenuity. Elia Beniash and colleagues wrote in Nature Communications that tooth structure is extraordinarily resilient as it endures hundreds of mastication cycles per day with hundreds of newtons of biting force. Healthy teeth offer a lifetime of this service. How do they perform so reliably? Peter Ungar's own article expressed marvel at the same design. This is a tooth structure image with the caption that reads, Human teeth are remarkably strong thanks to the combination of a hard enamel cap and tough but flexible layer of dentin. Remarkable that is for nature alone to have somehow invented but makes much more sense as being designed by the creator. Microscopic structures called prisms give enamel its strength. When teeth develop, specialized cells deposit these prisms at various angles to deflect stress that would otherwise crack our teeth after a few bites. Right in line with the 1998 creation-minded claim that poor diet, not poor design, underlies today's human teeth problems, Peter Ungar decried the ills of modern food choices for Scientific American. He credited dental researcher Rob Corusini with discovering that the key change to our diets involve eating soft and processed instead of tough and raw foods. Sugars fill the bacteria that makes teeth eroding acids. Soft foods fail to stimulate jaw development that would otherwise provide space for wisdom teeth. Angar wrote, Corusini reasoned that tooth size is pre-programmed to fit a jaw subjected during growth to levels of mechanical stress in line with the natural childhood diet. Did Corusini notice pre-programming because tooth and jaw development happens through actual programming? If so, who was the programmer? Angar deflected all of God's credit to his creation when he raised the banner of evolution over the ways that dietary changes challenge modern mouths. He wrote, an evolutionary perspective reveals our dental disorders as a consequence of an ecological shift. Really? What role did evolution play in this process if indeed it was actually just an ecological shift? Since the ecological shift explains it all, there remains no role left for evolution to have played. People around the world who once ate tough stuff had healthy teeth and jaws for millennia. Now that we all eat processed food, our jaws grow too small for wisdom teeth to fit and we get cavities that most of our ancestors never had to deal with. Where's the evolution here? It's just diet. Someone could label the effects of a bad diet on a good tooth design as evolution, or even label the effects of a bad gas in a good engine design as magic. But that doesn't make either assertion reasonable. From a biblical perspective, God created wisdom teeth and the jaws that hold them to develop properly through a range of stresses. We, not he, lessen those stresses. So it's wise to recognize that God deserves none of the blame from our poor treatment on His great design of wisdom teeth. Thanks for watching everyone and may you all have a blessed day.